of the Honorary Doctor of Philosophy in Leadership in Social, Business, and Politics to His Excellency Tun Dr. Mahathir bin Mohammed, the Prime Minister of Malaysia. His Excellency Tun Dr. Mahathir bin Mohammed is an outstanding politician leader and statesman who in the late 20th century laid down the foundation for the rapid development of Malaysia from a poor backward country to become a modern and advanced nation. He has also remained a clear voice on the international stage, standing up against injustices and for countries and peoples who are not able to do so. The son of a school teacher, Dr. Martyr, was born on the 10th of July, 1925, in the state of Kedah, before Malaysia achieved independence in 1957. He is the youngest of nine children in his family. Dr. Mahathir graduated from the King Edward VII School of Medicine in 1953 and worked as a physician before being elected a member of parliament in 1964. An UMNO party member, he was appointed Minister of Education in 1974 and then rose to become Deputy Prime Minister in 1978. In 1981, Dr. Mahathir became the fourth Prime Minister of Malaysia and served in that position 
for 22 years. The Look East policy was introduced by Dr. Mahathir to emulate the successes achieved by Japan and South Korea through their distinctively Asian ethics and work culture, how they value commitment to work, orderliness, and excellence. In this, the Asian way was also adopted to solve problems which effectively minimized international dependence. The new economic policy, or NEP, under Dr. Mahathir's administration, meanwhile, was necessary to narrow the wide social gaps and reduce conflicts in Malaysia's multiracial country. It was uniquely tailored to achieve national cohesion and ensure the nation's survival. Necessary to undo the close identification of race or ethnicity with economic function and status, which was a legacy of colonial rule. In order to move forward, Dr. Mahathir had in 1991 launched Vision 2020 as a key long-term goal for, the, for his nation. Under the vision, Malaysia would have 30 years to progress and gradually become a fully developed country. The goal of this vision were not for only Malaysia to have sustainable economic growth, but a stable, educated, and united population. The specificity of the vision empowered Malaysians to work together to single-mindedly achieve this final goal. Under Dr. Mahathir, Malaysia transformed itself from an agricultural country to an industrialized one. Malaysia is now the 26th biggest economy in the world, besides being a leading industrialized nation in the region. Dr. Mahathir has also been a strong proponent of ASEAN, bringing Myanmar into the fold and continuing to encourage ASEAN to expand its potential. During his tenure as the fourth Prime Minister of Malaysia, Dr. Mahathir introduced a proposal that would bring ASEAN, China, Japan, and South Korea together a grouping first known as the East Asian Economic Caucus, EAEC. Although unpopular at the time, it came later to be accepted as what is now known as the ASEAN Plus Three. Leadership in the 1997 financial crisis Malaysia was among the countries affected by the devastating financial crisis of 1997. Under his leadership, Dr. Mahathir applied a controversial financial policy that pegged the value of the Malaysian ringgit. This had never been done before, and detractors said Malaysia would be ruined as a result of it. This bold move, however, successfully pulled Malaysia out of the crisis. The positive outcome was proof of Dr. Mahathir's steady leadership and innovative thinking. The spirit of everlasting leadership 
Dr. Mahathir proved himself a true leader when, despite having retired, opted to pursue an uphill battle against his former party, believing that they have lost their way and were no longer effectively serving the people. It was also done to save his beloved country from the brink of financial ruin, a result of rampant kleptocracy, and to restore genuine democracy to the country. Dr. Mahathir tirelessly campaigned against the rampant corruption in the then administration, leading a coalition of parties known as the Alliance of Hope. Dr. Mahathir defeated all odds and emerged victorious in Malaysia's 14th general election and unseated the ruling political parties of Malaysia, which had never lost an election since independence. He was subsequently sworn in as the seventh Prime Minister of Malaysia on the 10th of May this year at the age of 92. He is not resting yet and is striving to stabilize his state's finances and restore Malaysia's reputation after the beating it took as a result of the international One Malaysia Development Berhad, One MDB scandal. Taking the above information and achievements into consideration, on 21st November 2018, the Rangsit University Council unanimously resolved to confer the Honorary Doctor of Philosophy in Leadership in Social, Business and Politics to His Excellency Tun Dr. Mahathir bin Mohammed, the Prime Minister of Malaysia. The Honourable, the President of Rangsit University, Thailand, members of the faculty of Rangsit University, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, let me start by thanking Dr. Arthur Kirayrat the President of Rangsit University for his kind words of which for some of them 
I feel I do not deserve. Nonetheless, let me reciprocate to the warm welcome by expressing my deepest thanks and appreciation to the university for inviting me here and conferring on me this honorary doctorate. It is indeed an honor. I am humbled by the acknowledgments and I am pleased to accept the honor comfort when I am Prime Minister of Malaysia and thus an honor for my country too. As one of the top private universities in the country, Rangsit University has distinguished itself on many fronts, particularly in the fields of medicine, the arts, and the humanities. Let me take this opportunity to congratulate members of the faculty and academic staff of Rangsit University for its achievements, their dedication in making this university one of the premier institutions of higher learning in Thailand, as well as in this region, is clearly evident. Ladies and gentlemen, I was recently in Bangkok in October 2018 for my official visit to Thailand after being sworn in as the seventh Prime Minister of Malaysia in May this year. I met the Prime Minister of Thailand and both of us renewed our commitment to further strengthen bilateral cooperation between our two countries. Relations between Malaysia and Thailand had remained strong and friendly throughout the years. Although our diplomatic relations began in 1957, when Malaysia gained its independence 61 years ago, our historical ties and engagements have been much longer than that, than that and could be traced back for centuries. For example, as far back as the 14th century, my home state of Kedah sent bunga mas or golden flowers to the Thai court as a tribute to Siam. Centuries have passed and history took its course. Our relations blossomed into a friendship through ASEAN in, 1960, in the 1960s and have further developed into the current solid partnership in bilateral and regional cooperation. We have had our differences in the past, but it was all reserved, resolved through mutual understanding and discussions. These differences have never led us to lose sight of the essential understanding and goodwill in our relationship. On the economic front, Malaysia and Thailand are among each other's top trading partners. Thailand is Malaysia's fifth largest trading partner globally and second largest within ASEAN. Our bilateral trade is growing steadily, reaching US $24.6 billion last year, an increase of 18.43% over 2016. Our cross-border trade, meanwhile, accounts for more than 60% of our total bilateral trade, which goes to show the importance of close cooperation and connectivity. We are also key resources of investments and tourism for each other, with close to 2 million Thais visiting Malaysia last year, while over 3 million Malaysians visited Thailand in the corresponding period. This is an opportunity that we should seize, not only in terms of economic growth, 
but also promoting greater connectivity and integration between both Malaysia and Thailand that is in line with the spirit of the ASEAN integration. Our two nations continue to prosper not only in government-to-government -government engagements, but also at the level of people-to-people -people interactions. If there are any two who does not subscribe to the policy of prosper thy neighbor, have a look at the Malaysia-Thailand relations and this doubt would disappear. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as the founding fathers of ASEAN, Malaysia and Thailand continued to play significant roles in ASEAN's community building and regional integration. It has been the cornerstone for both Malaysia and Thailand's foreign policy. At the 33rd ASEAN summit held in Singapore in November 2018, ASEAN leaders have pledged to continue maintaining and promoting peace, security and stability in the region while embracing the principle of ASEAN centrality. Indeed, the stability and prosperity of our region rely heavily on a united and integrated ASEAN. Thailand will assume the chairmanship of ASEAN next year with the theme Advancing Partnership for Sustainability. I wish to take this opportunity to congratulate Thailand on its chairmanship and assure you our fullest support on the emphasis given to sustainability. We are confident that under the able leadership of Thailand, ASEAN will continue to move forward together amidst the rapid changes and uncertainties in the global landscape. In the economic sphere, ASEAN has brought about many tangible advantages that have made direct financial difference to hundreds of millions. The ASEAN Free Trade Agreement, AFTA, has been established with zero or near zero tariffs. This has provided our business community with easier access to markets within our region, reduce the prices of goods, and help elevate poverty within the region. With further liberalization and integration, come still greater prices. It is estimated that the measures we are implementing under the ASEAN economic community will raise overall GDP in ASEAN by 7% by the year 2025. That will be a gain for our economies in the hundreds of billions directly from ASEAN. ASEAN should leverage on its 630 million population by making the right investments in essential services and projects within its members. In 2017, the ASEAN economy as a whole has expanded by 5.2% and the growth is expected to remain steady throughout the year. This has largely supported the robust domestic demand and solid export performance of many of its members. Having persevered for the past 51 years, maintaining, maintaining peace and stability within the region, despite its members' diverse political, economy and cultural fabrics, ASEAN has a, as a regional grouping has indeed been a success. It is worth considering just what else we would not have gained if ASEAN did not exist. There will be increased unemployment in some of the countries in the region. We would, we, we would not have enjoyed what we have today, the ease of movement of people, 
from country to country. We now have the ASEAN lane in all international airports in ASEAN countries, and our people could enjoy a visa-free travel through nine out of the ten ASEAN countries. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to have this opportunity to address the students of this university. You are the leaders of tomorrow and the hope for our future. To this end, universities play a significant role in providing opportunities and support for the students to explore new knowledge and realize their potential. Providing the necessary support and facilities to encourage the students to do research should be one of the priorities of, for governments. In developing countries, un universities that focus on research activities are growing in numbers. While research universities in this part of the world have, yet, have not yet achieved high global rankings, they play crucial roles in making it possible to join and compete in global knowledge society. I am encouraged to note that Rangsit University is already moving towards that. I look forward to see further cooperation between Rangsit and the universities in Malaysia. Ladies and gentlemen, before I conclude, I would like to once again thank the university for conferring on me the honorary doctorate. I deeply value the recognition and I shall further and I shall further to my people and, and the world possible. To the graduates, I'm sure you will be future leaders and architects of your nation. Congratulations on your graduation and I wish you all the best in the future endeavors. I thank you. The purpose in composing this song is to express our inspirations and deep appreciations that we have for His Excellency to Dr. Mahathir bin Muhammad, an outstanding politician, statesman, and a patriarch of mankind who has devoted his lifetime for the goods of his homeland for mankind as a whole. From His Excellency's recent visit to Thailand, all of us has the opportunity to learn move and know more about his aspirations, spirit of leadership, getting to know deeply about the underlying philosophy of his Look East policy, to emulate the success of the country in the East, following by the adoptions of Asian ways, the new economics policy, and the launching of the Vision 2020 as the key long-term goal for his nations, all of which has led Malaysia to the forefront. We are also impressed in his strong determinations in eliminating inequality, racial conflicts, reducing the gap in the society between the haves and the haves not, including establishment of mutually supportive relationships among countries at the regional and the global levels. Your Excellency has inspired us, most particularly the student who will become the nation builder, who will walk along the way to a successful future with strong determinations and the full belief in using Thai ways, with the blessing from the skies and spirit to reinvent our dreamland, Suwannapu. In upholding Your Excellency as a role model and a hero in our heart, this song, which is so heartily composed, essentially reflect all will to thrive side by side in the same direction around the world. Your Excellency have paved to achieve our goals. Dreamland will shine, lyric by Pisamai Jantavimon, melody by Assistant Professor Dr. Den Yu Prasad, music by Rangsit University, Symphony Orchestra and Chorus.
raindrops falling from the sky with morning sun so brightly shine with rainbow rage coming far above her together we could reach upon the stars with inheritance heart of gold with good deeds leading our way responding to duties in strong determination with sense of unity and solidarity come what With raindrops falling from the sky.